What in the devil's name is this? Portobello mushrooms. Where's the steak? Here are 10 things you didn't know about Outback Steakhouse. Much like any other chain, there are plenty of secrets about this Australian-themed but wholly American restaurant that customers don't know. Uh, Outback Steakhouse. I'm Australian, mate. Not from the Outback. Australia, mate! <laughs> Outback Steakhouse has grown in popularity since it first opened its doors in 1988. It was founded by Bob Basham, Chris T. Sullivan, Trudy Cooper, and Tim Gannon. Even though this restaurant is very loud about being Australian-themed, none of the founders have ever set foot in Australia. Where did they get their inspiration? The four founders state that they were inspired by Crocodile Dundee, a movie that takes place in the Australian Outback. Michael J. Crocodile Dundee. The founders of Outback Steakhouse made the conscious decision not to visit Australia while they were developing the idea because they wanted to cash in on all the Australian stereotypes that would appeal to their customers. In other words, they took anything that sounded vaguely Australian, like sheep shears and bullhorns, and included it in their restaurant design. Unsurprisingly, this means that actual Australians will find nothing that reminds them of home at an Outback Steakhouse. In other words, Outback Steakhouse purposefully plays off of a Hollywood version of the country and profits off of it as well. I see what you did there. Good one. Not real Australian cuisine. Crikey. You're not Australian, Gina. According to people born and raised in Australia, nothing on the entire menu at Outback Steakhouse, things like shrimp on the barbie, burgers, onions, are true to Australian cuisine. In America, when you order a mixed grill from the Outback Steakhouse menu, you get a piece of chicken, baby back ribs, and coconut shrimp, which doesn't sound bad in theory. But when you order a mixed grill in Australia, you get something very different. Sausage, liver, and bacon. Big difference, right? When an online user asked for Australians' opinions on Outback Steakhouse, one answered, Pizza Hut is more authentically Italian than Outback is Australian. Ah, uh, scusi. Barbara boopy. Che cosa? Peter, what are you doing? Speaking Italian. That's all we need to know about how similar it is to real Australian cuisine. If they were more focused on authenticity, perhaps they would have things like pavlova, a dessert that consists of a crispy meringue crust, light fruit filling, and a whipped cream topping, making it a hit among all Aussie dinner guests present. In any case, the thing that all Australians can agree on is that Outback Steakhouse is not Australian, not in the least. You're Australian! Be Australian! Bloomin' Onion Secrecy. The secret ingredient is... For those who don't know, the Bloomin' Onion is Outback Steakhouse's staple dish. Usually served as an appetizer, this dish consists of a deep-fried onion that's been cut to resemble a blooming flower, hence the name. There are 24 petals to each onion, and getting those petals even is the key to mastering this seemingly complicated dish. With the right amount of crunchy and salty, the Bloomin' Onion is one of the things that helped to make Outback Steakhouse famous. Because of how synonymous this dish is with Outback Steakhouse, Steakhouse, they used to keep how it was made a secret. However, nowadays it's nearly impossible to keep things under wraps, and their big secret has come out. Outback Steakhouse uses the Nemco 55700 Easy Flouring Onion Cutter in order to create their iconic dish, but there are plenty of others that do just about the same thing. Not only can you get the right look, but you can also get the right taste, too. Mmm, onion. In 2011, Todd Wilbur infiltrated Outback Steakhouse's offices and kitchens as part of the CMT show Top Secret Recipe. Bloomin' Onion creators boasted about the 17 spices in the onion and 37 spices in the dipping sauce, and while Wilbur cracked the code, you'll have to buy the access to his secrets. The takeaway? Even though this dish looks intimidating, now that the secret's out, you can definitely try your hand at making it at home. Okay, let's give it a try. Devilish conspiracies. Dwight, 
not everything is a conspiracy theory. The world is full of people with big imaginations, and that goes doubly for some people on the internet. Every restaurant has had to deal with complaints, food bloggers, and disgruntled customers. And sometimes these reviews can be helpful. They help the restaurant understand the needs and wants of their customers. But in other cases, these reviews can just be plain out weird and destructive. In 2017, Outback Steakhouse found itself in the middle of a conspiracy. A user on Twitter posted a map of several outback locations in certain cities, which happened to form the shape of a pentagram. And you were texting at the time, correct? How dare you, sir? I was tweeting. The implication was clear. Outback Steakhouse was somehow connected to Satanism. Of course, the most simple explanation is that all of this is a coincidence, but many people didn't buy into that. The original tweet was retweeted thousands of times, and many articles were written about it. Internet users clamored for an explanation, some of them asking what Outback Steakhouse was planning, others taking screenshots of their own towns and remarking that the restaurant locations also made a pentagram shape there, too, showing that whoever is running the Outback Steakhouse Twitter account has a good sense of humor, they simply posted a cryptic image that showed their bloomin' onion hovering over a map of Florida, and the comment, if the bloomin' onion is evil, then we don't want to be nice. Show your support by hitting that like button. We do appreciate it. Now, let's keep going. Let's roll. They season their steaks with 17 spices. Can anyone guess the secret ingredient? If you thought Kentucky Fried Chicken's 11 herbs and spices were a lot, you're in for a treat with Outback Steakhouse's steaks. Usually, people minimally spice their steaks in order to let the taste of the meat command the flavor, and it's generally agreed upon that things like seasonings, rubs, and spices should all be supporting the main flavor. Famed chef Jamie Oliver even recommends keeping it simple with salt, pepper, and a dash of rosemary and garlic. It seems as though Outback Steakhouse has taken a different approach because they put a whopping 17 herbs and spices on their steaks. <laughs> yeah, boy. Think about it. When was the last time you made anything with 17 ingredients? Probably never, right? Because that's way too much effort to put into something that could be achieved with a few choice seasonings. This has been proven by many cooks on the internet who have tried their hand at recreating Outback Steakhouse's famed flavor. Most have managed to make copycat recipes with only a fraction of the ingredients. One of the copycat recipes that has gained Lots of popularity on the internet is from The Taste of Aussie, and it comprises of only eight herbs and spices. Salt, paprika, ground black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, ground coriander, and turmeric. However, even though Outback Steakhouse's recipe is a little convoluted, we can all agree that it still manages to taste pretty darn good. Not bad. Not bad. No lunch? Not anymore. That's not our policy you have to order something from the lunch menu. Did you know that before 2015, Outback Steakhouse didn't serve lunch? While it seems only logical that a restaurant would serve lunch, it was actually never a part of the founders' plans. They didn't want to overburden their employees. Restaurant managers forced to work through lunch and dinner are often wrangled into 80-hour work weeks, not leaving any room to have a fulfilling life outside of work. Like reasonable people, the four founders of Outback Steakhouse didn't want that for their employees. They also didn't want their staff to be working two split shifts either because they figured their servers would be tired and want nothing more but to go home. Adding a lunch service would also complicate things in the kitchen. Cooks would have to prep for lunch and dinner at the same time, meaning that by the time they were actually serving dinner food, it would be less than fresh. Oh, it's so fresh. Nothing better than when they're fresh. Not so dire. However, after a year-long testing period, they decided that the increase in sales was worth the lower employee morale. And now you can go for lunch at Outback Steakhouse. Noise. Serving alcohol. Vodka martini. Chicken or stir. Do I look like I give a damn? Once upon a time, Outback Steakhouse would give out free alcoholic samples to those who could legally enjoy them. Those who lived in these blessed times remember it was something to behold, with delicious frosty drinks being served to customers who were of age. But in 2011, their alcohol service got into a sticky situation that would keep any parent up at night. Articles reported the story of an Outback Steakhouse that served a four-year-old a slushie made with vodka and peach schnapps, but it wasn't intentional. 
well. In the official statement released by the restaurant, they said that only the adults in the group were given the samples. They'd forgotten to mention the drinks were alcoholic, so the adults gave them to their kids. That incident made the company think twice about their policy, and in the end, they decided to stop giving out free samples. And it was probably for the better. Oh, right. Well, that is good to know. Another issue that the company faced with alcohol goes all the way back to 2003, when a biker was hit by a driver with a blood alcohol level over the legal amount. In the lawsuit that followed, Outback Steakhouse was partially to blame for over-serving the driver. The story doesn't end well. The biker died from his injuries in 2004, leaving behind his devastated family. In 2005, it was reported that they had reached a confidential settlement with Outback Steakhouse. Good for them. Employee considerations. That's all I have for you today. Let's have a great shift. In 2005, Chris Sullivan wrote an article for the Harvard Business Review in which he talked about his experience in the business. He stated that since all of the founders started at the very bottom of the restaurant business, they understand the hardships that their employees are facing. Not only do they know what it's like to start with nothing, but they also want to make things better than at most other restaurants. In order to commemorate this shared ideology, one of their core tenets was to be tough on results but kind with people. So they did some stuff. Studies. They looked at their restaurants and they realized that the happier their employees were, the happier the customers were. It turns out that customers like coming back to the same familiar staff. So the four founders decided to build a comfortable environment for their employees. Ah, very nice. Half of Outback Steakhouse's layout is devoted to kitchen space, a ratio that's basically unheard of in the restaurant biz. They made sure that there was enough ventilation for the kitchens and Outback servers are only only supposed to work three tables at a time, as opposed to most restaurant servers having to work five or six tables at once. Looks like treating your employees well garners better results. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Most popular items in Australia. That's a party platter. It serves 12 people. I know what I'm about, son. It can be pretty interesting to see how well an Australian-themed American restaurant would do in the land down under. While everyone now knows that the food at Outback Steakhouse isn't authentic Australian food, there's still plenty of good non-Australian food to try out. You can start out with their iconic bloomin' onion because it wouldn't be a trip to Outback without it. Then maybe you can have a steak, New York strip, or ribeye, T-bones, sirloins, have your pick. Delicious. If you're not in the mood for steak, don't worry, they've got you covered with a wide selection of seafood like their crispy calamari and their volcano calamari and prawns. If nothing has caught your fancy yet, you can also opt for their Cobb salad or their Razorback ribs or any one of their burger and pasta options. For dessert, why not try their chocolate sundae or the salted caramel cheesecake, New York style. Looking at their menu options, the food selection does look very American, but that doesn't mean it isn't good. Good eating. Indeed. Indeed. Humble beginnings. From his humble beginnings as a stay standing. As of December 2020, Outback Steakhouse had an estimated 1,000 locations worldwide. In 2013, when they were celebrating their 25th anniversary, the four founders went back to their home turf, the original Outback Steakhouse, located in South Tampa. In an interview they did with the Tampa Bay Times, the founders stated that they weren't actually sure if their idea would prosper. At the time, it looked like Americans were moving away from hearty things like steak towards healthier options. What are you going to have? I'm I'm thinking something raw and cucumber based. Plus, back when the first Outback Steakhouse was opened, casual dining wasn't as widespread as it is now, and customers were slow to trickle in. In fact, the place was so empty that they would ask employees to park their cars in the front parking lot to make the place look busier than it was. Originally, the founders didn't even want the chain to get too big. They figured they could establish roughly a dozen restaurants and make a decent living. It looks like their hard work paid off more than they ever could have hoped. Eight years after their first restaurant opened in 1988, they were expanding into Canada, and now what once started as a distant dream has become a worldwide chain. It is the best. We've got more. Tap or click for more great videos, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.